Hey there, Vine Nation. My name is Dave, and today we are reviewing School of Sorcery. Let's do it. Now, School of Sorcery is from Steve Finn at Dr. Finn Games. This is a review copy, so thank you so much, so, sir, for your support. Really do appreciate it. helps us grow. Now, this is a two-player game that excites me. I don't like the cover, though. I do like the lore of the wizarding world. I'm not the huge as a Harry Potter fan, but I am intrigued, especially when I hear two-player. And I think it's 45 minutes. No, it's 40 minutes. So that's decent fast. I would like a quicker game. Um, and this is a card-based game that has some dice. I'm intrigued even more. So let's go ahead and find out what comes in this box and then I'll tell you how to play and give this game a score. Let's go. All right, so this is what we get in the box. Nice cardboard pieces. Let's do the cardboard break test. Why Um, It's about double layer. It's not bad. Nothing spectacular, but decent. I will stand the test of time, and the art on it is pretty good. These little gem pieces are decent. I like the colors, but they're just standard gem pieces. Now, the cards are um, decent thick, and I think the art is nothing to write home about, but it's definitely decent. Uh, generic be the theme. Uh, it's still neat to have all these spell kind of cards. Now, we have some more cardboard bits up here and down here. Dice are just generic dice, but they're cool blue red ones. So, that's what you get in the box. Now, let's show you how to play. Alright, so in this two player game, you're going to be taking a lot of the actions at the same time, but there are different phases of each action. And they are all displayed on your player board, actually. So you'll be taking a crystal, five crystals, casting crystals, using portal, activating powers, and evaluating the locations. Now to start, you're going to give everybody uh, two red cards. You can draft them if you want. Uh, you're going to set up the middle like this, and you're going to give everybody five crystals and their re-roll tokens, three of those, and um, then you're ready to go. So in this game, you're trying to get 13 points to be the winner and you're going to, going to be dra getting cards by putting in your crystals and or putting it on the portal to pick the portal blast them on these cards which is super cool and you're accumulating victory points which are on the side here and there are three type of cards there are green yellow and red cards green cards go off immediately and give you victory points most of the time yellow cards are ones that you keep here but the one time you use this one here at the start of your phase uh, choose one opponent permanent power and block its use which is pretty neat and then the red cards are permanent uh, and they also have victory points on them so that's why you st i started with some victory points here mine are um some of the, these cards are take that and going to cut deep uh, this one here take one reroll to token if you have two or fewer tokens uh than your opponent so you can be stealing stuff and that doesn't just happen on the um red cards it happens here the same kind of effect one uh, opponent must uh, return one crystal from the personal supply so you're just making them lose resources so once you've got your five crystals, you'll move this little wizard guy down. Now you're going to cast them. You're going to have to roll these three dice. And uh, like I said, these are re-roll tokens. You can use any of them to re-roll if you want. Uh, you can re-roll all of them if you want. But once you're done, you're going to take your hand that you have and assign uh, where you're going to be casting the crystal. And you have to only disperse five crystals. So you can either do them regular and just throw them to whatever number is here. So I'm going to put uh, two right there, or you can flip it to the other side of the dice. So I'm going to, since I got two fours here, I want to put it whatever that um, f other face is, which is three. So I'm going to be putting two crystals on three and two crystals on four, which leaves one more. And this is a bluff card, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put that on two. And this is my disbursement of gems and my opponent's going to do the same thing dispersing their gems and uh, trying to get cards themselves so the next thing is the portal it's at six but once you uh, take a card and remove it the portal will be moving down and you replace the cards as they go which is interesting the portal what it does is whenever you put gems on it you can take the gems after you um you've 
evaluate where they go and put them on any card you want. So let's say this one here, it needs three gems. Up top here it says how many gems you need to buy it uh, to buy this card and you have to have at least two more than your opponent. And this be the case right here. And this broken wand is really interesting. It's either zero or seven points. You have to find both of them. So it's a lot of points, but you're gonna have to find both of them. And then you can activate your powers, whatever powers you have in front of you with your red cards. And then you evaluate the locations to see if they need to be uh, replenished. And you continue to do that, rolling these here. Now, if somebody happens to win a card and uh, there are gems on the opponent's side, they get their gems back, which could help them in the future. Or they could be stolen. <laughs> But you do this round after round until somebody gets 13 points, passing the wizard back and forth. And then whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the best sorcerer. So now let's give this game a grade and I'll tell you what I think. Let's go. That is how you play School of Sorcery. I'm surprised. I mean, I was excited to have a two player game, but this one is so much fun. It's getting a 78 for me, which is a higher grade. I try not to go out of the 70 ranks unless I really like something or if something, I just really don't like it. But this being a high 70, especially because it's such a compact little game and it's a two player game, you would, wouldn't think this would like blow your mind, but this surprised me. So the second game that I played this, well, I reviewed this week that surprised me uh, other than having a look because you can't judge a book by its cover, you know. But the art on the cards is actually decent and the production other than that is fair where the best part of this is the gameplay. Super simple, super easy to teach, and everything is uh, very easy to read. The iconography is quick. You have something in front of you to tell you what you're doing and go through the phases. And because some of the turn, well, the turns are sometimes simultaneously, the parts of them, it just makes it everybody interactive the whole time, which excites me. My partner, loves this game so we've played it a whole heap of times since i've got it who am i recommending these for anybody who is a couple that likes to play board games uh, again this is restrictive to two player games but that is my thing so if you are into two player card games and some dice play that does help mitigate just a tiny bit well this is for you the theme being wizard it's not too heavy so if you're a wizard fan it's not going to do much for you if you're not a wizard fan it's not going to do much for from averting you from this game but I do highly recommend this one. I was super surprised. So again, thank you so much, uh, Stephen, for this game. And thank you so much, Fine Nation, for joining me in today's review. It's been a pleasure. So until the next time that I see you, have a great rest of your day and a great time with all of you play. I'm Dave, and I'm out. Bye. Miko, it's time to go. Good girl, Miko.